Hey landlords and blessed investors, I'm Nicole Purvey and this is the real estate news that you need to know about for the week of my birthday, May 15, 2023. Home buying costs could spike by 22% if the U.S. defaults on its debt. The United States has never defaulted on its debt and it remains an unlikely outcome of the current standoff about raising the debt ceiling. But if it were to happen, which could be as soon as you won without intervention, it would further crush an already wounded housing market, according to an analysis by Zillow reported by CNN. In case you weren't aware, the U.S. could default on its obligations as soon as June 1 if Congress doesn't address the debt limit before then. In January, the U.S. hit its $31.4 trillion debt ceiling, and since then they've been well aware that they could run out of money sometime this summer if they don't raise it. Nevertheless, if the U.S. were to run out of money, housing costs could spike by 22% with the rate for the 30-year fixed rate mortgages rising above 8%. There would be 700,000 fewer homes sold in the 18 months after July. That's almost 12% of the 6 million sales currently expected during that span, according to analysis. In other words, if you thought this past year of skyrocketing mortgage rates and plunging sales was miserable for the housing market, just wait, there's more. If the United States defaults on its debt, we can do the past 12 months all over again. A senior economist at Zillow said, while we don't expect a debt default to occur, if it did, it would have unprecedented effects on the financial system. This will reduce lending and credit availability throughout the financial system. What that means for the housing market is that the cost of borrowing would rise dramatically and sales would be dropping. In Zillow's analysis, interest rates would spike peaking at 8.4% and unemployment would surge peaking at 8.3% from its current rate of 3.4%. This analysis projects what might happen in an event of a prolonged default and is not in a prediction that a default would occur. Keep that clear. This will be a scenario of a recession being triggered by a huge contraction in federal outlays. Home buyers and sellers have been adjusting to mortgage rates over 6% this spring, but the debt default could potentially raise borrowing costs even higher and send the market into a deep freeze. Why nobody is buying vacation homes anymore? According to MSN, at the outset of the pandemic in early 2020, demand for second homes soared as those with the means jumped on low mortgage costs and higher saving rates. Like many pandemic era trends, vacation home sales have plummeted significantly, according to a new housing report by Redfin. Per its analysis of optimal blue market data, Redfin found that mortgage rate lock agreements for March dropped 52% from pre-pandemic levels compared to a 13% decrease for primary houses. This is the lowest level for second or vacation home rate locks since February 2016. A mortgage rate lock or rate protection keeps your interest rate from rising between the time you apply for a mortgage and the time you close on your new loan. This allows borrowers to get the best mortgage rate possible while going through the refinancing or purchasing process. Conversely, if you lock your mortgage rate and interest rates fall, you can't take advantage of the lower rate or refinance. Mortgage rate locks for vacation homes peaked in August 2020 when they reached 89% above the average pre-pandemic levels of January and February 2020. March 2023 levels represent a drop of 75% since the high spike. According to USA Today, mortgage rate locks for second homes were down 49% year over year in March and have dipped 71% since January 2022. Mortgage rate locks for primary homes have decreased 29% year over year and 35% since January 2022. Now let's talk about why the demand for vacation homes have dropped. One, while demand for primary houses remains static, vacation homes are not a luxury, not a necessity. Second homes might be an attractive option when economic circumstances are favorable. They may be a riskier purchase when prices, mortgage rates, and inflation are high. Two, prospective second home buyers simply don't have the money for a down payment and monthly payments. Redfin noted that the typical second home was worth $465,000 in 2022 versus $375,000 for a primary home. With housing payments near their all-time high, a lot of people can't afford to buy one home right now, let alone a second. And three, fewer people are inclined to buy a vacation home to rent out as compared to during the pandemic. The pandemic caused the supply for short stay and holiday rentals to soar as wealthier people and investors bought vacation residences and overwhelmed the short-term market. 
U.S. real estate investors are losing money on roughly one in seven homes they sell, among the worst since 2016, and they are most likely to take a hit in these five cities. According to finance.yahoo.com, the golden days of real estate investors buying and flipping homes for a quick profit appear to have come to a halt. In select U.S. cities, investors have been forced to sell homes at a loss as sky-high house prices and elevated mortgage rates diminish home buyer demand. Investors lost money on roughly one in every seven or 13.5% homes they sold in March, according to a new report by Redfin. In comparison, only 4.8% of overall U.S. homes that sold in March sold at a loss. That followed a dire month in February when real estate investors lost money on 14.5% of homes sold, the highest rate since 2016 and a long stretch from the record monthly low of 2.8 percent in may of 2022 this dispels the myth that buying and selling real estate is an almost guaranteed money maker but the stats are quite strongly in favor of the investors real estate investors are most likely to lose money in the markets that saw the largest surges in house prices during the pandemic according to redfin the report analyzed data from 40 of the most populous cities in the metropolitan areas in March, the hardest hit market was Phoenix, Arizona, where 30.7% of homes sold by investors lost money. Phoenix was followed by Las Vegas, Nevada, 28%, Jacksonville, Florida, 20.9%, Sacramento, California, 20.2%, and Charlotte, North Carolina, 17.4%. You might wonder why investors don't just wait to sell until the housing market bounces back. Many long-term investors who rent their properties out are doing just that. But many flippers, especially those that brought recently, can't afford to. Home flippers, which Redfin defines as investors that buy and resell homes within nine months, sold roughly one in five homes at a loss in March, according to Redfin. Holding onto homes that aren't producing income can be expensive because the owner is on the hook for property taxes along with operating costs and monthly mortgage payments in some cases. Many short-term investors are also opting to sell because they know prices may have more room to fall and want to cut their losses. While the number of investor-owned homes selling at a loss currently is quite high, it's important to remember that many housing investors, whether large companies or small mom-and-pop investors, continue to make gains from buying and selling homes, even in cooling housing markets. In March, the typical investor sold a home for 45.9% or $145,000, more than the price they paid, according to Redfin. But those gains have shrunk from 55.3% or $173,000 a year earlier, and at the peak of the pandemic of 67.9% or 199000 in June 2022. Flipping might be off the table, but there are a number of strategies to engage when investing in real estate. And remember, there's always money in real estate. The most underpriced housing markets in the U.S. According to InsiderMonkey.com, apart from the stock market, the housing market is one of the most crucially watched sectors in the American economy. Housing prices, not only in America, but all over the world, are a key barometer of economic health. This is due to the fact that higher prices indicate that the public is relatively prosperous as it can afford to funnel out more funds for large purchases. Since a variety of industries such as cement, lumber, wiring, appliances, and more are connected to the housing industry, higher spending by the construction companies also ends up stimulating these sectors as well. At the same time, recent developments in the U.S. and the global economy have also put the housing market under strain. Starting with the COVID pandemic, even though the pandemic induced a widespread economic slowdown, the housing market presented an interesting case study. Researchers from the University of Chicago showed that lockdowns appear to have a direct impact on housing prices. They show that in the aftermath of the pandemic, housing prices grew the fastest in regions where people spent more time indoors. The researchers also break down the growth in housing prices and segment it based on the reasons for this growth. This reveals that half of the growth in the housing prices in 2020 was due to lockdowns at stay-at-home mandates with lower mortgages due to historically low interest rates fueling a smaller portion of this. Additionally, another crucial trend that affected the housing market due to the pandemic is working from home. While lockdowns generated significant employment, at the same time they also pushed large chunks of working people towards working remotely. According to the Census Bureau, this ended up stimulating the demand for housing in remote areas as people that were no longer restricted geographically through their workplaces moved to more affordable areas to improve their standard of living. 
Using the data from the Zillow Home Value Index, the Bureau outlines that the home sales dropped by 20% in 2020 and at the same time led to almost 2 million renters moving to a new location with cheaper rent. The net effect of this resulted in more people buying a home than renting it and caused a sharp divergence between the buying and renting indexes just as the pandemic hit. With these details in mind, let's take a look at some of the most underpriced housing markets in America right now. Number 20, South Dakota, 19, Pennsylvania, 18, Illinois, 17, Tennessee, 16, Wisconsin, 15, South Carolina, 14, Michigan, 13, Nebraska, 12, Missouri, 11, Louisiana, 10, Indiana, 9, Ohio, 8, Kansas, 7, Kentucky, 6, Alabama, 5, Iowa, Oklahoma, number four, Arkansas, number three, Mississippi, number two, and number one, West Virginia.